Welcome to this intro to toxicology. Let's start off with what is toxicology. The scientific study of adverse effects of chemical, physical, and biological agents on living organisms and the ecosystem. It encompasses the study of toxic substances, including properties and effects on living systems, mechanisms of toxicity, and ways to prevent or treat toxicological effects. Toxicology is a critical field of study that has a profound impact on human health and the environment. It plays a crucial role in ensuring the safety of drugs, food additives, and other chemicals. And is essential in the fields of forensic science, occupational health, and public health. It informs the regulation and management of hazardous substances such as industrial chemicals, pesticides, and pollutants to protect human health and the environment. There are a few branches of, tox of toxicology, but specifically we're going to touch on forensic toxicology, clinical toxicology, environmental toxicology, veterinary toxicology, and aquatic toxicology. First, I want to start off with my favorite forensic toxicology. This is an analysis of biological samples to identify and quantify the presence of drugs or toxins. Forensic toxicologists can provide key information about substances in a person's body even after death. Findings and research are key information in many criminal investigations. Next up is clinical toxicology. It's a direct application of research to an individual patient. Clinical toxicologists may assess patients to diagnose them, assess toxic toxin severity, and provide a long-term prognosis or treatment. Research involves the prevention and treatment of diseases caused by chemicals and toxins. The study often has a more direct approach to an individual. Environmental toxicology focuses on how chemicals affect the environment and human health. Interest is the movement of chemicals throughout the environment. Understanding where they go, how they get there, and how they may enter our bodies. Some examples of study of how air pollution in certain areas may have long-term adverse effects on the population. And veterinary toxicology. Research the existence of toxins and poisonous chemicals in wildlife, livestock, and pets. Attempts to understand their origins and how to prevent further exposure. An example of veterinary toxicologists can identify toxins present in animals that originated from poisonous plants or a contaminated water supply. Speaking of water supply, aquatic toxicology. Aquatic toxicologists analyze the adverse effects of contaminants and pollution from chemicals on marine organisms and the environment. They assess the condition of an aquatic ecosystem and monitor those conditions over time. Toxicologists in this branch may study the effects of pollutants on many scales. So they may be studying how uh, pollutants bioaccumulate, how they get processed by small organisms and then those small organisms get eaten by bigger organisms, and those bigger organisms get eaten by even bigger organisms, and then eventually eaten by us. So then they see how those how those toxins progress through the environment. Some common routes of exposure for toxins is inhalation it occurs when a toxin is breathed in through the nose or mouth and into the lungs. This includes exposure to air pollutants such as smoke or dust, smoking or snorting. Ingestion occurs when a toxin is consumed orally. This includes contaminated water, swallowing of pills, or food or drinks spiked with drugs or alcohol. Skin contact occurs when a toxin encounters the skin. It includes exposure to chemicals through skin contact in the workplace, handling of contaminated materials, and drugs in the form of transdermal patches. Injection occurs when a toxin is introduced into the body through a needle or other puncture method includes accidental needle sticks, drug use through intravenous injection, etc. Now let's touch on an co important component of toxicology, pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. Dynamics. Pharmacokinetics describes the movement of drug in the body, including its absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion, or ADME. Pharmacodynamics describes the relationship between drug concentration and its effects on the body. The dose-response relationship. The relationship between the amount uh, or dose of the toxin administered and the resulting biological response. 
This is fundamental to understanding toxic toxicity of a substance. This is impacted by several factors. Route of exposure, the duration of exposure, the susceptibility of the individual, as well as other, other factors, including genetic variations, age, and underlying health conditions. All of these impact how the dose is going to affect a person. Some types of dose response. We have linear. The response increase is linear as the dose increases. An example, this is alcohol. The effects of alcohol on the body, impairment of motor skills and cognitive functions, increase linearity with the amount of alcohol consumed. Then we have nonlinear. The response increases disproportionately to the dose. We have threshold effects, where a minimum dose is required to produce a response. An example of this is vitamin C. A minimum dose of vitamin C prevents scurry, but beyond this threshold, no beneficial effects are observed. We have saturation effect. A maximum dose response is reached even with increasing doses. An example is insulin. Once an insulin receptors are all occupied, increasing the dose of insulin does not further decrease blood glucose levels. Then we have the U-shaped response. It shows an initial increase with an increasing dose followed by a decreasing it higher. An example of this is hormesis with radiation. Lower doses of radiation may stimulate, stimulate cellular repair mechanisms, but higher doses can be harmful and decrease cellular function. So there's a certain point the dose starts to have a negative effect. Now let's dig into ADME. Starting with A, absorption, distribution, D, M, metabolism, and E, elimination. ADME refers to the process that the drug undergoes within the body after administration. These processes determine the amount and duration of drug exposure to the body, as well as its effectiveness or toxicity. Absorption. This is the process by which the substance enters the body and reaches the systemic circulation system. Typically it occurs at the site of an administration, either oral, intravenous, or dermal. This is how the body, how the, how the drug enters the body. Some factors affecting absorption. The physiochemical properties of the substance, specifically molecular size, lymphocytosity, ionization state, or formulation. The route of administration, either oral, intravenous, intramuscular, inhalation, or dermal. And the presence of other substances, including food, other drugs, or alcohol as well as physiological factors, including pH, blood flow, surface area, gastrointestinal motility, and skin integrity. All of these impact the way a drug is absorbed in the body. Distribution. The process by which a drug or chemical compound is transported throughout the body by the circulatory system. After absorption, the compound enters the bloodstream and is carried to various organs and tissues. Some factors affecting distribution include blood flow. The rate depends on blood flow highly, and highly diffused, perfused organs such as the liver, brain, and kidneys receive more blood flow than less perfused tissues like fat. Like fat. Solubility. Solubility of a compound affects the ability to cross cell membranes and intertissues. Lipid soluble compounds can easily cross cell membranes, whereas water soluble compounds require specific transportation mechanisms. Molecular weight. The size and shape of the compound affects its ability to enter tissues. Small, lower molecular weight compounds distribute more rapidly. And protein binding. Many drugs and chemicals bind to plasma proteins. Highly protein bound drugs have similar have smaller distribution volumes compared to in and remain in the bloodstream longer than low protein bound drugs. Metabolism refers to the process by which the body breaks down drugs or other foreign substances into smaller molecules that can be excreted from the body. Phase one and phase two. Phase one metabolism. They involve enzymes that oxidize, reduce, or hydrolyze the drug molecule. Resulting, the resulting metabolite may be more or less pharmacologically active than the parent drug. It is mainly carried out by the cytochrome P450 enzyme or SIPs in the liver. 
phase two metabolism it involves conjugation of the metabolite with a polar molecule such as glucuronic acid or sulfate it makes it more water soluble and easily excreted by the kidneys carried out by enzymes in the liver and other tissues factors affecting metabolism several factors can affect the rate and extent including genetic variations in drug metabolizing enzymes age gender disease states and interactions with other drugs some drugs may also induce or inhibit the activity of drug metabolizing enzymes and excretion the process by which a drug or its metabolites are eliminated from the body this is often through feces urine sweat or breath some of the mechanisms involve the transfer of drug from the bloodstream to the excretory organs the primary organs of excretion are the kidneys liver and intestines the liver plays a crucial role in excretion by metabolizing drugs into more water soluble forms the kidneys filter these drugs from the bloodstream and eliminate them in urine and the intestines eliminate drugs via bile into the feces now i want to dive into specifically a drug class specifically opioids and the opioid crisis so diving back into the history of opioids they've been used in pain relief for centuries opium being cultivated for medicinal use as far back as ancient summer in egypt and in the modern era opioids were widely used during the civil war to treat wounded soldiers but more recently there's been a rise of opioids in the u.s opioid use began to rise in the united states in the 1990s pharmaceutical companies began aggressively marketing opioid painkillers these drugs were marketed as safe and effective for treating chronic chronic pain in the early 2000s it became clear that these opioid painkillers were highly addictive and were being overprescribed. regulations were put in place to restrict access to these drugs and addiction to prescription opioids turned to heroin and that led to the rise of synthetic opioids the rise of synthetic opioids such as fentanyl has contributed to the severity of the opioid crisis fentanyl is much stronger than op than heroin and prescription opioids often it is often mixed with other drugs leading to a much higher risk of overdose why does this matter opioids are a class of drugs that are very effective at binding to receptors in the brain and body these receptors are part of the body's natural pain release system which includes endogenous opioids such as endorphins they can be highly addictive both physically and psychologically the mu opioid receptors the mu opioid receptor is the primary target for most opioids responsible for producing pain relief and feelings of, of euphoria located in areas of the brain that are involved in reward and motivation also in the spinal cord and peripheral nervous system these can activate the brain's reward system producing feelings of pleasure and motivation which stimulates the release of dopamine a neurotransmitter that is associated with pleasure and reward over repeated use or exposure can lead to dependence this changes the brain's rewards word system making it more difficult for a person to experience pleasure from natural rewards like food sex or social interaction this contributes to the cycle of addiction of addiction individuals continue to use opioids to avoid the negative emotions and physical withdrawal which can lead to overdose overdose can occur when a person takes too much of a drug of an opioid or combination of opioids and other drugs such as alcohol or benzodiazepines this can lead to respiratory depression which in turn leads to brain damage or death if not treated properly synthetic opioid deaths have been steadily increasing the blue line shows synthetic opioid deaths the gray, uh, yellow line is heroin and the green line is cocaine synthetic opioid deaths in 2015 were 5700 in 2022 that number rised to 71,000. that's a drastic increase in drug overdose deaths by synthetic opioids more than 10 times increase over seven years and the synthetic overdose is driving up the total drug overdose deaths 
as shown here. You can see that the leading driving driving factor behind the overdose deaths are synthetic opioid overdose deaths. I'd like to thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. As always, stay tuned, like and subscribe, and if you're interested in learning more, check out this next video.